I did this for like three months, and I could do one one arm pull up. So I hope you'll succeed as well. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? It's Derek from Bouldering Vlog and today's gonna be a video that Hosok Lee and I collaborated on to make a training video for you guys. For two days now, I've been able to climb and train with Hosok Lee and I can't help but notice that his skill level is just quite remarkable for the amount of time he's been climbing. A lot of people find him pretty easy to relate to, including myself, because we have a similar build and we've been climbing for about the same amount of time. But obviously, the skill gap between me and him is huge. During his time as a climber, he's climbed with some professionals, picked up training techniques here and there, and he's kind of combined them into his own sort of routine that works with his schedule. We thought it would be a really good idea to try to put together a video to show how he trained for his first 90 days as a climber. He had used pretty much the same routine with some slight variations to reach all the way up to a V8, and that's a grade that I haven't been able to touch, so I'm looking forward to actually following this routine myself. One thing to note is that when he says training days, these are days where he does not climb. It's just a day specifically for doing workouts that are climbing related workouts. But this day is not going to involve actually climbing. Also I'm going to be doing a video following the same routine. I'm going to follow it for 30 days and hopefully I can see some results and I'm quite, quite curious and very excited to see what's going to happen. So if you guys want to check that out, make sure to go to my channel at Bouldering Vlog. And let's just say you train on Wednesday, like <laughs> training, okay? And then I take rest one day, one day off and climb, uh, climb, one day off, train, one day off. Or if you feel if you feel too intense during these four days, since you're you've already uh, trained and only had one day rest and climbed like two days in a row, if you don't think you can't take much more intensity, then I take two days rest and train, rest, climb, rest, train, something like that. It's just a combination of training, rest day, climbing day. Totally depends, depending on 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 your conditions and, and how you feel. You know, there's no like uh, strict rules. The reason I don't climb on my training day is simply because I can't. After uh, after following all these like uh, training routines that I do, you're just. You just want to go home, <laughs> you know? If you have energy left after your training routine, then you're not just training enough. That's what I think. I'm not, I'm not even a professional, you know? But that's how I, that's how I, how I did and I still do. Uh, that's why I divide uh, training days and, 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 and climbing days. For me, I need like two days to get full recovery. But if you take two days off to get full recovery, it's it's kind of a luxury, you know, for me. So sometimes if I really feel like I need to uh, get that recovery, I take two, two days off, but usually I only take one and proceed. Pull-ups is the single most important discipline a climber can do. If you're too tired, then just ignore everything else, but do not forget about this, this pull-up thing, you know? That's, that's my advice. <laughs> First variation is just a normal one, like your uh, shoulder, sh shoulder wide grip, and just do 10 pull-ups. Normal grips from the most bottom, uh, without your shoulder engaging, you just go one, two, ten of this. Uh, take a rest for 45 minutes. If you're too tired, one minute is okay too. Uh, the goal is just to complete all 
10 sets, you know? You don't want to die while doing it, so. Uh, if you're too tired, just uh, take more rest. And the uh, second one is to, is with your fist, uh, you know, facing together. Like this. One, two, 10, and 45 seconds rest. Important thing you should remember when doing it is you should really engage your uh, back muscle, not not just your uh, biceps, but also your back muscles. To do that, remember that your chest should touch the bar. You know what I mean? And it's helpful if you look up. When you do this, people do this, right? Mm -hmm. But I recommend you to like, like pull your chest in so that so that you you can engage your back muscle like this. You know what I mean? Makes a whole lot of difference. So we covered this, this, right? And then wide grip. Here, what I used to do is to just, you know, go as far as you can, like grab it at the end of end of the bar and uh, again like engaging your back muscle go up look up like this two three like this ten you might find uh, the wide grip much harder than than the normal one so if it's just too hard for you in the beginning you can uh, reduce the uh, the intensity by instead of like doing ten you can you can do like seven or for five to fit your personal personal need. This is a this is an assist assist band. It stretches as you as you pull down, so it might be a little harder than like a, a solid tower or something. You do uneven pull-ups, and one hand. Basically, you do is what you do is you uh, one hand on on the bar and the other is on, on this band. The, the more the hand on the, the band goes down, it gets much harder. So, and then one, two, something like that. And take a rest, other side again. One, Oh, I'm feeling a little tired today. Anyway, anyway, it works this way. Here, of course, you might find uh, uh, one side a bit easier than the other. So this is where you can also like adjust the intensity of your of your routine. Like, let's just say if you feel stronger on on the on the right arm, uh, which it will be. The case most of the time then uh, do 10 of these seven of these feel free I found it really useful in climbing if you keep it in a in a, in a slower pace so you you just you know you just take your time while pulling off so like this just normal grip and your normal pull up was this right but you do you do it like you break it down step by step like really slowly. One as you go down, much slower. Two again. Three. Something like that. You will not be able to do. <laughs> 10 of this for sure I'm, I'm pretty sure if, if you've already like if you've already followed uh, the, the rest of the routines you're not gonna make 10 of this so um, I don't set a specific number when I do this I just do it till fail till failure uh, as the last set of this entire journey <laughs> Of a pull-up routine. I like to do uh, explosive pull-ups. 
like you engage your whole body to make one pull up so it's it's going to be much much faster than your uh, normal pace pull up like this something like this you know um, I feel I, I was a little bit wobbly because I'm tired right now but it doesn't really matter how your your uh, uh, feet dangling at this point you're already super tired you've done well so you know like but all the in the in all the other sets you need to uh, keep in mind that you need to uh, keep your body pretty stable you know not like I can't even I can't even do it it's just okay and then straight keep your body straight so that's I did this for like three months and I could do one one arm pull up I hope you'll succeed as well <laughs> you get to you get to do 10 sets of pull-ups right you divide it into two sections five five and after doing five sets with rest in between every set for uh, 45 seconds after five uh, sets you take uh, five minutes rest and then do do the other five push-ups I do like here it's a bit it's not a perfect place to do a, a push-up because it's you know the mat is pretty uh, spongy uh, on the firm uh, floor it's much better you do it on, on, on the floor okay so you do just normal ones like 10 or 15 it is doesn't really matter okay and then take a rest for 45 seconds one minute uh, totally depends on you and then I do wide like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then take a rest then I do this like uneven pull-ups like this one two one should uh, uh, one above your head the other uh, under your uh, under your belly button. under your yeah, belly button like, like this one two three four ten and then one two three four ten and you're good to go <laughs> yeah is something you can do on uh, campus board okay I need to gain my breath <laughs> uh, like here there are li li literally like millions of variations you can do on a campus board but what I find uh, what I find most useful is this exercise like um, it depends you can just you start uh, from the lowest rung and then you hit three or four depends on your uh, ability what I do is that I hit four five four five four just hit Oh. And then fall off uh, till you, you try it till you fail. Take a little rest and then like be of course like change side. Four, five, four, five, four, something like this. If that makes sense. It's 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 uh this one's really good for uh for building up your uh lock of strength on crimp and this also engage a lot of your cores and, and shoulder you know so it's really good like uh, as a beginner I used to try
train on this comfortable round. Now I train on, on crimp, but you can just choose whatever grips you want. Uh, the reason I don't do this on a bar is because um, what I felt is when you do this on a bar, you don't really engage much of your uh, core strength because uh, the grip is too stable and uh, you use shoulder uh, to somehow raise your legs. Leg raise on a bar, then it's easier for you to get like create momentum, which shouldn't be the case this this uh, in this routine. So, so you make it as slow you make it as slow as possible. And what I do is like you don't fully hang. You engage a little bit of your shoulder like like this, and then uh, goal is to touch like. Uh, at the same level as your hand, where, where, as where your hands are, with your uh, big toe. First, left leg to the left side, right leg to the right side, and go down. Right leg to the left side, left leg to the to the, to the other side, and both legs like this. This is uh, uh, two circle, one set. I haven't done it in a long while, so it's really burning my core. But see, this is uh, this is one set, and I do this for three times. Uh, one minute rest in between sets, like I just did one, right? Then take a minute off, and then one again. Take a minute off, and one again. And then you uh, take five minutes of rest every time you do a different exercise. Different exercise, yes. So you just do normal ones, like your hands. Well, anywhere uh, you feel comfortable. I like to do this just you know uh, behind my behind my head. Some do this. It's okay. Just don't do. You know, so it's just natural position. There's no strict rules, um, at least for me. So you do, you do normal ones, two, three, four, five, something like that. Twenty or twenty-five if you're super duper strong, then thirty. And then there's this variation. Where I picked up from uh, from the guy who first got me into climbing, the Iron guy. Hello, Amio. <laughs> <laughs> so you look uh, to your side as you go up, like uh, hands at a neutral neutral position, natural position. Just go one. Two, three, four, five, change side. One, two, three, four, five. You know the name, right? Flirt case. Yeah. You do this. No? Uh, or this. Until you're tired, like I am right now. <laughs> you're basically doing a whole training session. Huh? 
You're basically doing a whole training session. After for, like yeah. intensive moonboard session. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I do this. Too. This is this help. This helped me a lot uh, for my uh, front lever thing. One, two. The thing is that you never really go down, down. Because if you go, if you hit the bottom, you get, uh, you know, you get rest. You don't want to rest while, while you're uh, um, working on your core. So you minimize your rest. So your, your core engages in this position. So try to keep this, this position as, as, oh <laughs> as long as possible. <laughs> so. You don't go, you don't do this, but one, two, three, four, five. Uh, can you count it for me? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, this is what I do. Moonboard day is basically just a uh, climbing day for me. I mean, I don't really like divide moonboarding and gym climb, you know, they're, they're both the same. It's just uh, part of uh, my climbing day. When I climb, I like to climb things that can really like push my limits or test my limits, where my limits uh, lie, you know? My current level in climbing is what I think is that on average, on average, I'm at this level, V10. On average, I mean, I can climb this in a day or two. Uh, above that, like V11 or V12, this is my like real, real red point. Great, where I need at least more than like two or three days to send it. This might go in, in a day, but it can definitely uh, takes more than a couple of days also. But when it comes to like V9, I'm pretty certain that I can finish in a day. So this is where I usually like to uh, climb in my usual sessions. Sometimes I, if I feel like uh, pretty strong and, and light, uh, on a certain day, then maybe I, I would like to go for this level, but usually I climb uh, at this level, which is the maximum grade that I can finish in a day. If I'm feeling too heavy, then I climb this level. So this is what I like to do. The ground rule of my usual climbing day days is is uh, to test my limits like I said that's what I like to do and that's one of the most important factors uh, you should have in mind when climbing if you really want to like you know improve as a climber and, and, and grow stronger you know